say that the main message is really a reiteration of what we said back in December, which is that Nigeria is at a critical juncture. In fact, a critical juncture in its six decade um, history. And at this point, the government, the business, political, other elites really, and the Nigerian people need to reach a consensus about the way forward. The COVID crisis was like a wake up call. And that, as a result of that, the government pushed through a number of really bold reforms. Our main message now, six months later, is that the momentum on those reforms needs to be sustained. They remain as urgent, in some ways even more urgent, because of some things that have happened, such as the rising prices, the, the high levels of inflation, and the high levels of insecurity in the country. So for Nigeria to realize its potential, to have the economic opportunities for all its young Nigerians coming of working age, I think that momentum of the reforms that the government started in 2020 needs to continue. I would say that's our main message. Yeah, thank you very much. That sounds very optimistic. Uh, but but like the, the title of this report, Shubham, very quickly, is about resilience through recovery. Define that for me, those two key words, resilience through recovery. How did you arrive at that title? So the resilient part is that, you know, the global economy, while it seems to be on an upward trajectory, there will, there will continue to be fluctuations and shocks and disruptions. Locally, we don't quite know yet whether what will happen with the COVID pandemic. We, we hope that things will get much better. So the economy needs to be resilient to withstand those shocks. But in the middle of that, withstanding those shocks, it also needs to chart out a path. Nigeria as a country needs to chart out a path to realizing its potential. I mean, if you think of one of the points we made six months ago was that Per capita incomes today in Nigeria on an inflation adjusted basis are about what they were four decades ago in 1980. That cannot be the future going forward. So the, the importance of a recovery, not just from the recession of last year, but really from in terms of realizing the full potential going forward so that you have growth picking up and not just picking up, but accelerating. And that growth has to really trickle down to all Nigerians. So every single Nigerian has a chance at a better life. Interesting. Let's get some numbers behind this. Samako, it's good to see you once again. So in terms of how Nigeria ended the COVID-19 year on the macro side, give me some numbers, throw some numbers into uh, some, some figures behind the facts that Shubham's talking about. Good evening, Wasson, and good evening to all your viewers. Thank so you. in this edition of the Nigeria Development Update, when we see uh, growth in comparative perspective, there are two messages that the report highlights. On the one hand side, that Nigeria has exited the recession. It, it, it declined, the economy contracted by 1.8% in 2020. We're projecting that it will recover by 1.8% of growth in 2021 and to 2.1% in 2022. So that is good news. However, that recovery is is below the projected rate for sub-Saharan Africa. For example, this year alone, whereas we project that Nigeria will be recovering at 1.8%, we see that the rest of sub-Saharan Africa will be growing at about 3.4%. So there is more potential in the Nigerian economy in the recovery, and we see the close link between the implementation and the sustained implementation of reforms and the achievement of that potential. On the labor side, uh, more people are working, but we do see that some of them may have been pushed to work because of the crisis. So people are hustling, people need to make a living, especially to recover from what happened during 2020. So not necessarily because more people are working, the situation is better, uh, but, uh, but, but we, we do see that linkage between what is happening at the macro level and also what people, ordinary Nigerians, are facing on a day-to-day -day basis. Interested how these numbers come together, but let me just put this to uh, Shubham. Was the outcome of the Nigerian economy in 2020 consistent or in line with your expectations at the World Bank? I think, you know, if you look at what we were projecting back in June of 2020, we were fearing that 
The outcome could have been a lot worse. 3.2%, a recession, a contraction of the economy of about 3.2%. The fact that that did not happen is actually great news. I mean, so in that sense, we're, we were very happy to have been proven wrong, if you like. Uh, and, and I would say that was a, in large part due to a number of policies, the kind of the fiscal stance of the government, the number of pol the kinds of policies that the government introduced in 2020. So I would say what happened was Certainly, our projections turned out to be not uh, worse than uh, th what the reality turned out to be. But in terms of the directions in which we were hoping that the government would take the necessary steps, that was very much in line. Uh, but again, Shubham, when you look at the 7 million Nigerians fell below uh, the poverty line due to inflation, security problems has affected food production. Uh, do you think this enough is being dealt in those areas? I think, you know, they, they, this is something, this is why I said what I did earlier about the urgency of continuing with the reforms. I mean, the COVID, the fact that the economy did not contract as much as we had feared does not mean that things were good for most Nigerians. Uh, it's just simply that things could have been a lot worse. And the, there are a lot of work remains to be done in terms of helping ordinary Nigerians rebuild their lives, rebuild their livelihoods, and then, okay, sure. you know, reach their aspirations.